Good morning, peeps. Welcome to another vlog. Today is a little bit interesting because they are calling for some really, really rainy weather. Downtown Toronto has a tendency to flood when there are torrential downpours, so we're a little bit nervous as to what we are doing today because we're going downtown right now, but hopefully it makes for an interesting vlog. <laughs> So as I mentioned before, peeps, we are going downtown and we're doing a fixture that we've done quite a few times on this channel. And I'll give you a hint, it's one that I'm not a big fan of. So if you were thinking bathtub, you are absolutely correct. As you probably already know, bathtubs are a little bit difficult and Dan and I aren't always a big fan, but we've been getting a lot of calls about them. And it's gonna take place in a building, which means that there are two slabs on the side, which means it's a little bit difficult to get it in. Taking that all into consideration, we got a big day ahead of us with the bathtub. But the good thing about it is, the more you do, the easier it gets and you start to eventually know these little tricks of the trade that make it a little bit faster. So that's hopefully where it's gonna get at, where one day I'm gonna be doing a video and I'm gonna be like my favorite fixture, which is the bathtub. That's the hope, that's the game plan. Oh, and by the way, peeps, you know what to do, baby. Let's go do a delicious bathtub. <laughs> So it's really coming down out there. One thing I wanted to do in this video that we haven't done in the past with bathtub is I want to look at it historically. I want to find out more information about the fixture itself, when it sort of came into being. So hopefully we can take a look at the internet and find out if there's something really interesting out there. So let's get to work. Here we go. Here at the job site, that is the bathtub we're going to be installing. This is the one we're currently taking out right here. We're getting masks on, it's gonna get really dusty, so we're about to get started. Let's get to this.
Alrighty peeps, so what you're seeing in here is something called a bathroom group. A bathroom group consists of three fixtures, a bathtub, a vanity, and also a toilet. So essentially how buildings are set up is you have your building wall and then you have a soil stack that runs vertically through all the floors and then comes down horizontally and runs along the bottom floor as well. So what you're gonna see is essentially the same fixtures on each floor. So you're gonna have a water closet right here, as you do down here. You're also gonna have a vanity up here, as you do down here. And you're also gonna have a shower down here, as you do down here. Now a bathroom group encompasses six fixture units. The water closet accounts for four, then you have a vanity which accounts for one, and then you have a shower which accounts for 1.5, but we drop the 0.5 and just consider it six. So here's essentially how it's all set up. So you actually have a wet vent going on here where you have a water closet which goes in, which is a three inch pipe and then your shower will connect into your water closet in something we call the vertical leg, which is the vertical portion of the water closet. And then in that pipe right there, we're gonna have a vanity connection which goes inside. This series of pipes that goes all the way up here is going to be upsized to two inch in order to account for the wet vent. Now, if you don't know what a wet vent is, it's essentially a drainage pipe that also acts as a vent pipe and vice versa. And every wet vent has to finish off with its highest fixture ending in a continuous waste and vent which is what this green line represents here. This green line is essentially the vent that travels upwards above flood level rim and connects into what we call a vent stack. Now a vent stack is essentially a stack that runs parallel to a soil or waste pipe that will be connecting all the continuous waste and vents on every floor. So as you see here it connects up and will connect in. And as you travel up along, you'll notice that the second wet vent up here will also travel up and travel into it as well. They will branch off and then come up to the final vent, which is the stack vent, which goes up through the roof. Alrighty peeps, so like I said earlier, I wanted to look into the history of the bathtub because it's a fixture I don't know a lot about. So let's dive into the internet to see if we can find out anything interesting. By the way, all the links are gonna be down in the description below. That way you can look at the sources. Good old Wikipedia, the bathtub tub bath or tub informal is a large or small container for holding water in which a person or animal may bathe. Most modern bathtubs are made from thermoformed acrylic porcelain enameled steel fiberglass reinforced polyester or porcelain enameled cast iron. A history of bathtubs and bathing. Documented early plumbing systems for bathing go back as far as 3300 BC with the discovery of copper water pipes beneath a palace in the Indus Valley civilization of ancient India. Evidence of the earliest surviving personal sized bathtub was found in the Isle of Crete, where a 1.5 meter, 5 feet long pedestal tub was found built from hardened pottery. Wow, the clawfoot tub which reached the apex of its popularity in the ninth, late 19th century has its origins in the mid 18th century, where the ball and claw design originated in Holland, possibly artistically inspired by the Chinese motif of a dragon holding a precious stone. The design spread to England where it found much popularity among the aristocracy, just as bathing was becoming increasingly fashionable. Early bathtubs in England tended to be made of cast iron or even tin and copper with a face of paint applied that tended to peel with time. The Scottish-born inventor David Buick invented a process for bonding porcelain enamel to cast iron in the 1880s while working for Alexander Manufacturing Company in Detroit. The company as well as others including Kohler Company, Kohler is still around by the way, and JL Mott Ironworks began successfully marketing porcelain enameled cast iron bathtubs, a process that remains broadly the same to this day.